Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to call to order a regular meeting of Council of March 13th, 2023. Uh, as we call this to order, we just want to make knowledge that the lands on which we gather are the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples. Specifically, we recognize the Lekwungen people, known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, and that their co historic connections to these lands and adjoining waterways continue to this day. Up first, we have approval of the agenda. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Uh, we have a minute. We have adoption of the minutes of February 27th. Moved and seconded. Are there any changes, corrections, amendments, fixes, typos? Seeing any, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed? That carries. Uh, we have receipt of the comment committee minutes, and we can receive both of these together. Moved and seconded for receipt of the minutes. Any? Well, we already reviewed them for errors and so forth. So, any other changes that people have seen? Not seeing any. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed. That carries. Uh, we have mayor's remarks. Uh, they won't be long. If anybody is watching or the live stream, uh, and you called, you, you can call into the eight five five number and uh, hit the passcode and hit star nine to raise your hand if you want to address council on any matter of public interest. Uh, that'll show up on our. Uh, internal systems here, and uh, we can take those calls. Uh, for my mayor's remarks, um, I just want to thank uh, uh, Ms. O'Connor and Councillor Braithwaite for helping organize the volunteer dinner uh, that was held this weekend. Uh, we were able to recognize over 100 people in the room and, uh, and some more that weren't able to make it. Uh, these are all people who give their own time and expertise and the benefit of the community. And uh, just uh, it's a wonderful event every year. We didn't have it during COVID, so it's nice to have these happening again. Uh, but I just want to thank Councillor Braithwaite and, and Ms. O'Connor on staff who did a fantastic job of organizing it all. Um, never an easy thing. I also just, uh, in that uh, evening, we took special time to recognize uh, Mr. Ken Agate. Uh, Mr. Agat, uh, from the time he arrived in about uh, 1981 to open the Blethering Place, uh, contributed Im immensely to this community and continues to do so. Uh, he's been involved with Oak Bay Tourism pretty much since that time, even before it was officially a, a community event or a community organization. Uh, and uh, he is the organizer of the great uh, community uh, collector car show that happens every year on the avenue, So, um, and amongst many other things. So it was, a, it was really nice that we had the opportunity to, to recognize him at that as well. Uh, I just going to congratulate Oak Bay High for a very successful production of Chicago over the last 10 days. It seemed like it was so sold out or close to almost every night, uh, and deservedly so. And uh, also excited to see the Oak Bay Heritage Foundation's first post-COVID uh, heritage talk uh, restarted. So this is now renamed the Marion Cumming Heritage Lecture Series, uh, which happened last Thursday while we were in budget lockup. Uh, they were having an a entertaining presentation on Abkhazi Garden, so I think I would have preferred to have been there, but we got some good work done here as well. And um, uh, second to last, just wanted to uh, acknowledge that the groundbreaking uh, that happened this week for the new National Center for Indigenous Law up at UVic. And I was able to attend there in official capacity, and that was nice to see that that work underway. It's really going to be, I think, both a, a, a leader in Canada, but even in the world, is really uh, it's, a, it's a new new era in terms of uh, coming up with the indigenous legal orders and law uh, within our common law system. And last but not least, but for sure, uh, this Thursday, just a reminder: at six o'clock, we're starting our third. Uh, in our budget deliberations considerations. It's anticipated to be our last meeting. We may have one special meeting after that, if necessary, but that's uh, this Thursday, March the 16th. So with that, uh, I'm going to invite any members of the public who wish to address council on matters of interest to Oak Bay, uh, not on items on the agenda, but on, on uh, just things of general interest to Oak Bay, either in the room uh, or uh, online. You're more than welcome to uh, come forward or, or raise your hand at this time. If you're in the Zoom app, you would hit, you would uh, raise your hand with under the reactions tab, and if you're in the, um, uh, if you're calling into the one eight five five number, I'll just remind again, it is star nine. It is not pound nine. It is star nine. But I don't see phone numbers uh, showing up here, so I don't think we have anybody who's called in. Uh, giving it a second because we'd like to have that extra delay allowed for. Um, I'm just going to turn to staff. As I don't see any indications on systems here that we have anybody who's indicated they wish to speak. Oh, you're, so that's correct. We don't have any, anyone registered. Okay. We will move on to items on the agenda. Uh, first item 
7, and this is a, the next whole section, is uh, sections 7 and 8, if you're following on the agenda, are all available for public input. Um, as these have all been dealt with at Committee of the Whole, where we had fairly robust public input on them, I'm just going to ask, invite anybody from the public to speak to these items, and it's, this would be 7.1, 7. I think it's 7.2, uh, and then, but it also sections 8, so 8.1, 8.2, and 8.3. Uh, are also welcome to um, address us. So if there's any members of the public who wish to address us on any of these items, you are more than welcome to do so. So these are uh, project backgrounders, uh, business improvement area budget, and the operating budget summaries. These are the key pieces on these sections. I don't see anybody raising up their hand. So we'll just go through these, and again, these have been uh, gone through pretty robust discussion at the committee at the whole level. Uh, these are recommendations from that body, which is us sitting, not as a legislative body, uh, recommendations to us for, re for recommendations. So can I just get uh, on item number 7.1 to start with? And you don't have to read it, just move the recommendation. Move recommendation. Moved and seconded. Thank you. We don't record who moves and seconds it, I just need the, uh, the pieces, so thank you for that. Is there any discussion on those? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Smart. Uh, thank you. Just with regards to um, 7.1 and staff and staff's involvement in, in the meetings around this, I just I appreciate the initiative so far. And my question um, through you, Mayor, to staff is, if without having a council priority project around affordable housing right now, um, does staff have the um, ability to bring forward to council for consideration um, things that are discussed in this group that that may be recommended? I'm not sure I entirely understand the, the question. Did, did staff catch that? Oh, go ahead, Councillor Smart. This is referring to the uh, number one and number two, identify affordable and diverse housing options and develop rental housing stock strategy. That's the piece that you're speaking to. Oh, sorry. Um. Are we not on item 7.1? Am I on the wrong piece? Uh, oh, apologies. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're on. Okay, apologies. I'm just on the wrong item because I didn't realize the agenda had changed. Okay. Okay. My, my apologies then, um, I will save my comment for um, later in the agenda when the relevant item comes up. It feels up. about, it, about <laughs> understanding the relevance of that question to the, to the topic since it wasn't actually related to that topic. Okay, so the, we have moved and seconded in the recommendation, the first recommendation, which is those three priorities. Councillor Green, do you want to add something? I'm sorry, j just a question of process. The Monterey House is not part of this motion, it will be the next, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. So I'll call the question on these uh, three, uh, well, yes, the three items uh, in this bullet points. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed. Those carry. The second recommendation that came from Committee of the Whole to us. Can I get a move and a seconder? Are we going to have discussion? Move and seconded. Thank you. Councillor Green, you wanted to ask? Uh, yeah, it, it's just, again, a, a question of procedure and process. I had voted against the original motion January the 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm assuming I would vote against this motion then to be consistent or not. I can't. I'm just not sure about process at this point. Thank you. Sure, thank you. I think uh, if you still feel that's the wrong path, then you should vote against it. Uh, absolutely. This is uh, we make recommendations as a body, but you're under no obligation to take the to also support the recommendation from that. So hence is why it's broken out in these ways. Go ahead. Thank you for the clarification. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? And opposed? Councillor Green opposed. That carries. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to number eight point. Sorry, 7.2. Uh, we have the recommendations to black project background for the active transportation program. Mm -hmm. Moved, moved, and is there a seconder? Get a hand from somebody to second. Thank you. 
Uh, so this is the uh, revised uh, project background for the active transportation program based on increased levels of funding, et cetera. All right. Seeing no further discussion, I will call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. And then we move on to Section 8, which is Committee of the Whole Recommendations from March 9th. So 8.1 is the budget for the Oak Bay Business Improvement Area. Move approval. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Uh, then we move on to 8.2, which is the operating budget summaries. Um, this is uh, this was a motion that came arose out of the last meeting, uh, so it comes here. If it's adopted here, then it, it moves forward as a as official direction from council. Um, uh, move approval. Moved, seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. And if it feels like we're bumping through these quickly, anybody watching, it's because these they've all been um, dealt with a great a great great deal of depth at the uh, committee level. So we're on moving on to item number nine. This is also available for uh, public input. This is relating to the RHAP, or Regional Household Affordability and Prosperity Project. We have Mr. Bowl here, who is our Director of Community Building and Planning. Um, uh, if anybody wishes to address us on this in, in the chambers, uh, or in the, uh, uh, I'll call you up in just a minute. Uh, the process here will be, we're gonna get an overview from our Director. Uh, we'll take some questions from council before we get to any motions. I will invite uh, people to speak to us on the matter, and then uh, at that point, once any public input is concluded, we will then uh, move back here. So if you're, again, online and watching the live stream, I would encourage you to call into the one eight five five number at this time and hit star 9 to raise your hand, because there is sometimes a lag in the live stream. Uh, and obviously, if you're online and you wish to address, uh, talk to us about this matter, uh, please raise your hand within the uh, Zoom app as well, so that we can go straight to you uh, at that time. Well, this, this hybrid motion, uh, meeting thing makes everything a little bit more wordy, but here we are. Mr. Bull, welcome to the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I'll give a short introduction to this item. I'm also joined today by Tina Santiago. Uh, she's on the screen there, uh, joining us virtually. She's from the Social Planning Council, and she's uh, also available to... Uh, provide more information or answer questions. <clears throat> so the item today in front of you is um, forwarded by me on behalf of the City of Colwood, but also the Social Community Planning Council. And um, um, uh, they are seeking uh, support from us and a couple of other municipalities in the region uh, for a, um, a grant application to uh, the Union of British Columbia Municipalities. And this is under a uh, grant program uh, that would hopefully secure funds for phase two to the regional household affordability and prosperity project. Um, this project, um, phase one, obviously has been underway and uh, you might be familiar with it uh, by some of the council learning sessions that have been organized by the Social Planning Council. Um, I became familiar with the project last summer when I started here and was made aware of the project and invited to uh, uh, attend a couple of the meetings that uh, at the staff level are taking place between the different municipalities and so I was um, kindly invited to be uh, uh, attending these meetings and, and hear what was going on and uh, share my thoughts from time to time. Um, and, and thirdly, uh, the project that was also organized works up and free events for the general public. So um, for the continuation of the project and phase two that is proposed, um, uh, the Social Planning Council would like to see uh, the partnership expanded to other municipalities, including Oak Bay in this case, of course, and um, yeah, continue uh, that, that work uh, within the region. Um, and this involves research, sharing best practices, hosting events, fostering community engagement, raising awareness on social issues and reducing stigma around housing poverty and housing insecurity. Um, the municipal involvement uh, on the part of staff is, is limited to taking part of that community of practice, as it's called, which is through the meetings and attending the events. Um, and um, the funding for the project is 100%, if it's successful, 100% funded by UBCM, and that is administered and um, handled by the City of Colwood and the Social Planning Council, and they will take care of the different contract arrangements or hiring consultants and, and, so, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, in front of you today is our recommendation. My recommendation is to uh, support this project and applying for the second round uh, to allow for the continuation and expansion of this work uh, that has been underway and that we also endorse uh, the city of Col Colwood to, to be the primary applicant for this grant application. 
uh, together with the Community Social Planning Council. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, Tina Santiago is here available as well from Social Planning Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Bull. Certainly coming to us with a pr prospect of free money and no work is a lot better than most of the housing applications and stuff that we have to go through. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I think questions from members of council. I know some are very familiar and some are less, maybe less so, but uh, any questions? Councillor Smart? Yeah, I'll um, just follow up with the question I um, had from earlier. Um, I just wondered, um, in, and I appreciate um, um, staff's involvement um, so far, um, if things come up, um, ideas and initiatives from these working groups, I just wondered what the process is and whether staff has license to potentially bring those things to council for consideration. Mr. Bull? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we have some, uh, I have, we have some uh, tentative hours in our work plan to attend the meetings, of course. Um, um, if need be, uh, there could be updates provided to council uh, occasionally, uh, maybe through a short briefing report. Uh, but most of this work uh, will come to you in different ways. For example, if there are events that are you, you are invited to, the Social Planning Council will extend the invitation that way. And, and that also goes, for example, for the, the best practices, uh, one of the recent workshops. Um, former city planner from Vancouver was invited to, to talk about certain topics. So that's more likely the way how this project will will show its results to, to you. But yeah, by all means, if council at some point wanted to get an update or if there's a need for further input from council, um, uh, I would make the time to, uh, to provide you with an update for sure. I'm going to just rephrase that question because I think what I heard in the question wasn't... Uh, what I heard in that question was, for instance, if we're two or three months down the path with infill housing, and, you, and, and there's some uh, things out of this learning where there's some lessons learned or some new ways of doing things, um, just some comfort that staff have the, have the, um, the, the freedom or the, the, the empowerment to come back and bring those ideas to us in a way. I think that was the gist of what I was hearing from that question. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, sorry, I didn't quite get the gist of the question then in that case. Um, so this would, could be learning either from our own projects or from the from this particular collaboration, I think, right? So, uh, yeah, I think um, <clears throat> through, the, through my involvement with the department and, and how these things uh, develop over time, I think we have plenty of opportunity at the staff level to, to make sure that there's this cross-referencing of, of ideas and concepts that we might use. And I think that um, it's probably two ways. If we have certain ideas for that our, our staff or consultants would develop for our own projects, uh, I could bring that forward as there as well and, and even get there some thoughts on, on, on the um, the staff community of practice members, for example. So I think definitely, practically, that is uh, what will happen because, uh, yeah, of the sharing, that's really an explicit goal of this program, I would say. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Patterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor, and through you to Director Bull. Thank you for the uh, information, um, Director Bull. Just without putting you on the spot, do you have any examples of deliverables since this program was implemented that um, have uh, hopefully benefited us but might have benefited others in the region? Well, uh, through you, Mayor. Um, yes, there was a, um, a document prepared that was um, presented to um, uh, the new councils in, in December, I believe, but maybe Tina can clarify that for me. But it was a, a best practices guide that I think was provided to, to council at that time. Um, and uh, I, I think that's one of was one of the main focus in, in phase one. And definitely that overview is both both helpful for staff, but also for uh, for councillors uh, experienced and new to, uh, to see a refresher on the different tools that municipalities have. I'm just going to share as well. The I didn't attend the first; I had a conflict, but the second session uh, was uh, was extremely useful for from a, a counselor perspective. And if those continue at that kind of quality, I'm, I'm sure that that would bring a lot of benefit to people. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Appleton, and then we'll take the public input. Oh, thank you, Worship. And similar to 
uh, what Councillor Patterson was referring to. I don't want to put uh, uh, Director Bull on the spot, but just interested in, you know, there's obviously various conversations of this nature going on between municipal staff and at different levels of, of government about on this topic. And I'm just kind of wondering whether Mr. Bull could comment on sort of what's the, uh, what's, I mean, there's a va there's a clear value added here and sort of well, what's the what's the sort of interstitial value that this that this program offers like what uh, what what uh, information is it using and what uh, services is it putting forward that isn't uh, served in another format Mr. Bull? yeah thank you for you mayor um, I think this is part of uh, indeed there's lots of other efforts going on the province prominently has all kinds of ideas of how they would like to promote um, housing production particularly, but also affordability. Um, um, there's of course, um, uh, depending on the side of the project in the region, there are developers, but also non-profits doing their own projects. Um, I, I think over here, what the intent is of the Community Social Planning Council, the, uh, the intent, I should say, is, um, is making sure that there is a good network and exchange with information. Um, I think they are gear, their efforts are a bit more geared to the general public and to councils to, to make sure that there's a good understanding of the issues. So I, I, do, I do think that's, a, on a, uh, from my perspective, a, a useful part of what planning is about. So thank you. I'm going to invite members of the public to come forward. Come on up. And uh, you. We typically have a limit of about three minutes, but we're not that hard and fast on our, our pieces. Uh, the process here, if you could just state your name and municipality of residence, then uh, and hit the button in the middle of the speaker so that turns it on. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome. Thanks for having me on, on here, here Council. Um, I want to preface that I am a member of the public, but I also work with the Community Social Planning Council that uh, put this RHAP project on as well. Yeah, so here's my little kind of spiel, which may also help to explain the context of it. Sure. Can you also just state your name and municipality? Of course, yeah. Uh, my name is Kidani Pitt Chambers. My municipality of re residence is Saanich. Um, so the Greater Victoria area consists of 13 municipalities with very porous boundaries, as we all know. Um, all of the region's municipalities are currently facing economic pressures and housing pressures as well. And this has only been excavated due to the pandemic. The challenges have been the biggest in the muni municipalities that are closest to Victoria's urban centers, so Oak Bay, Esquimalt, Saanich. Um, and the most constant and pressing issues are exponentially have exponentially been housing costs, as well as the cost of food. Because of this, um, a regional partnership has kind of emerged here um, that looks to tackle things a little bit more at the regional scale than the provincial or federal scale as well, um, since we've recognized that housing within the CRD is very much a regional issue. The project uh, really is looking to build on existing bases of housing needs reports and recovery and prosperity strategies as well. Um, and it's really trying to bring focus onto housing pro poverty and ways of affordability and avenues out of housing poverty as well. And also looking to destigmatize it a little bit as currently I believe most Victorians spend 42% of their annual income on rent alone. So. What we're kind of looking to apply here today and get you guys on board with would be that phase two. Um, so I know that I've seen some of your faces at our counselor learning sessions um, hosted by us at the CSPC. Um, we had another one last Monday as well that a uh, few faces were at as well. Um, so this partnership in the phase two uh, between Colwood, Victoria, Saanich, Langford, Oak Bay and Esquimalt, all of you guys hopefully is going to look to collaboratively uh, help all of all these municipalities talk to each other a little bit more and uh, leverage all of the expertise and resources that we already have kind of cross pollinate all of this instead of doing double work from 13 municipalities. Um, so we're really looking to have our phase two be looking at tenant displacement and, dislo and dislocation. Um, looking at data reporting and housing needs and how we can integrate that into our dashboard and our reporting as well. And then looking to pilot this model on the regional scale. Um, it, we do have a lot provincially and we do have a lot of these kind of initiatives federally, um, but at the regional scale is something that's a little bit different and something that we're really proud to, we think, uh, at the forefront of, um, at least in the province. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, uh, my little spiel on behalf of the Community Social Planning Council. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in here of tonight. Course. Yeah, I might stay there for a minute in case there's any questions of you. For sure. I, 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 the one question I just that came out of this that I just wouldn't mind a little clarification on. 
uh, is really to our staff on this one, is just on this is the uh, the funding itself is coming from UBCM. Uh, is this is it specific to like the RHAP process, or is it a a grant available to help with uh, sort of regional or other approaches to things? I mean, this this program essentially just fits into their model. And if you don't really answer that question, I'm happy to. Uh, Go to our guest. It might, it might be a question for our guest. I'm, I'm going to pull from the information from the staff report, which uh, the community council helps us with. Um, so the, the, the grant program's focus is poverty reduction planning and action program. So um, <clears throat> that sounds definitely like a wider scope. There's probably other projects you could submit for that. Um, but this one um, is going to be submitted specific for this pur purpose. And maybe our guest has uh, some more backgrounds so to offer. Is, or, is, is Tina, uh, oh, there we go. Santiago. Santiago. Ms. Santiago, do you, do you know the answer to the question? Yes. Uh, hello. Good evening. Thank you so much for the opportunity for us to attend. Um, yes, this is a particular application for the from UBCM for this. And it's uh, because uh, phase one was also um, funded through UBCM. So this is a uh, second phase funding that we will be applying for the same um uh, uh, the next stream, stream one, and we applied stream one for phase one. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Councilor Green. Any additional questions? We'll also get to motions at some point as well. Go ahead. And through you to our guest or to to, to Mr. Ball, um, you talked about an amalgamated model, so working across the 13 municipalities together on the same issue, which I think is a really good idea. How will that be delivered? Will that be delivered through a staffing team in each of the municipalities, or will that be a combination of the Community Planning Council and staff? Um, and and if or how will any of the politicians be involved? Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I guess through, through the mayor here. Um, uh, it would be done through a community of practice. So with a lot of the regional planners from the 13 municipalities, we meet with a, our community of practice currently about once a month um, that could change depending on the funding for the program but currently we meet with our community practice we go through different policy levers that we're looking to explore and how we're going to tackle them as a region and then for counselors for your learning portion um, that would be through counselor learning sessions so we had one on december 5th and we just had one last monday as well um, those counselor learning sessions involve us at the cspc um, and we basically look through your um, own planning staff at policy levers that you guys would seem to want to look to examine a little bit deeper. And then we will usually have special guests and speakers on board who are experts on those policy levers who can speak to them for you guys. Of course. Thank you. Uh, great. Thank you very much. Um, to see the other questions, so perhaps a motion, we start with a motion to receive the report. So moved. Executive, thank you. Any discussion on receipt? Not seeing any, all those in favor? Any opposed, unopposed? And if there's a will of council that uh, we can move the second two together, I believe, to support the grant application and, and to endorse the city of Colwood as the grant applicant. So moved, Your Worship. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any other discussion? I see any I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. Yep. And uh, yep, thank you for all the work that's going on. All right, moving on to section 10. Section 10 does not have pub does not include public input. Uh, these are upland siting and design applications. And uh, we have Mr. Miller here as well to help us go walk through these. So perhaps I should hand it over to you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I apologize. I don't have the agenda in front of me. Is uh, section 10, uh, 3125 North Fork? Uh, yes. Yeah, so 10.1 is 3475 Cadbury Bay Road. Cadbury Bay. Okay, perfect. Sorry. Uh, so the district has received uh, uh, an upland siting and design application for the property located at 3475 Cadbury Road. Uh, this application is to review the construction of a rear deck and paved patio, um, the renovation of exi an existing uh, deck constructed with a vinyl membrane surface, and uh, construction of a second tier that will include a swim spa and a hot tub, construction of a concrete patio and the installation of a sport, co uh, sport coat or court, and, um, and installation of an outdoor kitchen. The lot that uh, the subject lot is located in between the intersections of Chiltern and Cabro Bay and uh, Cedar Hill. It's on the east side of Norfolk Road, just uh, uh, just north from the, or just adjacent from the, the uh, sorry, it's on the east side of the Norfolk Road, just adjacent from the golf course. It's zoned R2. 
It's uh, just above 36,000 square feet, or 34,000 uh, square meters, or 3,400 3, square meters. And it, the, the principal dwelling that on the that is existing on the property is was built in 1964. Uh, a review of the zoning, uh, parking, and screens and fencing bylaw uh, showed that uh, the proposed work was in, that was being con conducted uh, was in compliance with those bylaws. Um, an excerpt from the ADP meeting was included in the report, and. Um, the panel has given the, provided their recommendation for approval. Uh, if approved today, the application will still need to obtain a bu building permit before they can commence construction. So, thank you very, thank you very much, Mr. Mueller. Sorry, I, I, I apologize. Is it Mueller or Mueller? Mueller. I, Mueller. Yeah. Thank you. I remember I asked the question last time, then I couldn't remember the answer. So thank you, Mr. Mueller. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Mueller? I believe the applicant is available online as well. I have a Mr. Craig's. Here, perhaps it's a piece. If there's any questions, we can see if they're available. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Smart. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. I just had a question. Um, actually, actually, I realize my questions are actually more for for staff than. Um, is this one? Okay. Um, uh, just a question around um, um, pool, pool safety. Is this pool small enough that it's considered like a hot tub and would just be covered, or does it need a, a gate that is continuous? Um, fencing around it for safety? Um, I can say that we're looking into the the, the, the specifics of this particular pool. Uh, it's called a pool spa, um, or a spa, a swim spa, sorry. Um, our screen and fencing bylaw does require you to have an a enclosed gate and closing, uh, or enclosed fence and, and closing gates uh, for any pool. Um, and at the time of building inspection, uh, this one they would kind of imp impose that um, or look into this deeper and like the specs on the pool and, and uh, exactly where um, that requirement would fall in. Thank you. Councillor, go ahead, Councillor Smart. I just wanted to ask um, since we had a couple of um, emails in the fall about um, pickleball courts and noise and stuff like that, I just wanted to know what our current bylaw, like bylaws are around noise and, and sports courts. I imagine this is very similar to anybody having a driveway and having a, a basketball um, net in their driveway, but I just wanted uh, to be more aware of our current bylaws. Sure, I'll give that to Mr. Bowell. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah. Um, the, the courts themselves, the sport facilities in the garden are, you know, a, a, a piece of landscaping, depending on the surface, it might count towards uh, coverage. So that's kind of more the zoning bylaw uh, angle on this. <clears throat> when it comes to the use, um, uh, the bylaw that applies is the, the noise bylaw, so that's a short name for it. Um, but it allows for the reasonable use if you have a single family home, then a certain level of what you would expect to be uh, a reasonable amount of noise or that you can hear what your neighbors might be doing. I think there is that there was an example recently where there was a pickleball court that created uh, a noise concern and that is really uh, under the noise bylaw that uh, there are some hours specified which is more relevant for construction um, but yeah duration and being a nuisance to neighbors do come into play but it um, to give you a sense of what we ha staff had deemed to be you know what is reasonable where it does become un unreasonable uh, I think in the example that we looked at, there was uh, uh, play times on a pickleball court that exceeded four hours frequently, and we felt that that is, was very intensive use, and, and because the, the sport is a bit noisier than other activities in, in people's gardens, uh, we did follow up with the uh, owners of that particular example, and that, that I believe that's now been resolved. Um, but yeah, sorry, I was going a little bit more in detail there, but uh, the noise bylaw uh, uh, regulates that. Thank you. Thank you. Any, no, anything else? Any other questions for staff or the applicant? Hmm. I had the same question about the pickleball noise, so thank you. Uh, great. Uh, so we have the application here in front of us. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Let's move receipt, Your Worship. Okay. Receipt of report. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? I will move the staff recommendation, Your Worship. Move seconded. This is to approve the setting and design application. Uh, any other discussion on this? Don't see any. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? That carries. So we move on to item number 10.2. Uh, Mr. Muller, it's 3125 Norfolk Road on the agenda package. Thank you. Um, so the District of Oak Bay has received an upland setting and design application for the property located at 3125 Norfolk. 
Um, this uh, application is to review the undertaking of exterior renovations, including uh, window and door upgrades, cladding upgrades to the foundation, ex existing stucco chimneys and gutters, addition to, of an arbor element above the garage door, and upgrades to the front and rear porch and rear deck. Uh, the lot is located on the east side of Norfolk Road, just north of the intersection of Norfolk and Lansdowne. It's zoned R2. It's 1,600 uh, meters squared, or just above 18,000 uh, square feet. Uh, the principal dwelling, uh, which is subject to the renovation, was built in 1969. And a review of the zoning parking law, uh, zoning and parking and screens and fencing bylaw um, within the scope of this work, an application uh, considered the, it to be in compliance. And ex an ex ex excerpt from the ADP meeting was uh, from the February ADP meeting was included in the report, and uh, it's noted that the design panel provided their recommendation for approval. And uh, if approved today, the applicant would still need to obtain a building permit for com before commencing construction. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Are there any questions on this application? All right. Move and receipt. Sorry. Move and seconded for receipt. All those in favor? Any opposed, unopposed? I move the recommendation. Move and seconded. This is to, yeah, uh, this is to approve uh, the setting, upland setting and design. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, um, thank you. I just wanted to um, thank the applicant for not ripping down the house and um, putting something new there and just trying to augment what they had already. Um, I think that uh, bodes well for that area. There's been a lot of um, construction in that area, and, um, and this will be a really nice addition um, to the outside of this house. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. Any other discussion? Uh, before I call the question, I will just uh, note the owners on online here, so I'll just echo uh, the comments of Councillor Braithwaite. I think uh, we always appreciate when older homes are well cared for and, and updated uh -huh. appropriately, and uh, uh, this is a nice example of, a, of a, uh, just some tasteful updating of, a, of an existing house. Uh, thank you. Uh, with that, I'm happy to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? That carries. Thank you, Mr. Muller. Mr. Bull, uh, I don't think we, anyway, we'll come back to these things. So we just have new business. Is there any new business for members of council tonight? Seeing any, we have correspondence from other governments or agencies. Um, so we have two tonight. Um, uh, the first is the Township of Esquimalt. We're just <coughs> updating, CCing us on their letter to the province. Uh, and then there's a, a letter from the City of Victoria asking us to fund uh, a small portion of the AVICC conference in 2024. Um, I think we should just we need to receive these, but I think there may be a bit of discussion in terms of the uh, in terms of both. So why don't we get a motion to receive the letter from the Township of Esquimalt? And then if there's any motions, yeah, go, moved and seconded. Thank you. Uh, so the motion is. Uh, why don't we just call the question on the on the motion, and then we'll come back. If there's anything arising, um, or actually, before we call the question, this is an appropriate time just to take questions uh, or other pieces. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Well, thank you, Worship. I'm just uh, you know the the letter from Esquimalt notes that you know there was the uh, information put forward to the province to allow for trials of lower speed limits that was shelved, uh, which appears semi indefinitely, um, just due, due to lack of resources. And I, I haven't heard any update on that um, around the council table. And I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 I think it's reasonable for Esquimalt to have asked that question in this correspondence. And I'm just wondering if, and I don't want to put staff on the spot here, but if staff have any update as to whether or not the province has told us anything about that, if it is as I suspect that it is that we don't know anything further, then I would ask potentially that we uh, draft a letter to follow up on this one to ask what the status of the pilot program is because we've already discussed that at council and integrated our interest in that so yeah. I'm not sure if staff do I can probably provide a little bit of update from what I've heard sort of a little anecdotally but um, so as noted in here the, the rules were changed to allow pilot projects uh, that came out of the UBCM resolution uh, as in fact it's come just for due to background over the course of uh, last 10 years or so, the, the idea of changing the default has come up to UBCM a couple of times from uh, changing it from 50 to 40. Uh, at the UBCM floor, it's often split along rural-urban divides as uh, urban uh, communities have just said it's unreasonable to have a, a default uh, that, that they require them to sign their very long roads that, are, that need to be higher. Um, and so, but out of that came this, the, the province is just willing to look at, instead of having a default, uh, 50 kilometers an hour for unlined roads that the uh, that 
we do pilot projects. So there was an intention to do a pilot project here in the region. Um, uh, Saanich, Esquimalt, Victoria, Oak Bay, um, uh, all asked the province. Um, myself and I know uh, Mayor Haynes at the time had numerous conversations with the minister. Um, there was there was buy-in. What happened uh, right at the tail end of that application process was there was a there was a split. There was sort of there was agreement to do the f uh, it was a, it was a pilot at 40 kilometers an hour, uh, and then there was a split where uh, there was a, some changes. So some some were asking for 30 as a default, and some remained at 40, and the province uh, essentially just just said well, at this point no. If the, you know we were prepared to do a pilot at 40, uh, at this point we're not prepared to move it forward in that kind of format. They were looking at it doing it regionally if there was regional buy-in. I think. This is good to have it back on the table, and I think you know something I was thinking of as a motion arising might be just to ask Esquimalt to include us, uh, and just to express our interest in participating in a regional pilot, so that's very clear, and uh, and and if possible, include us with discussions with the province, so that we're part of that piece as well. Um, but I that's sort of a bit of the history of it. So I I think um, their ask here of being allowed to do it is reasonable. I think the province is based on the conversations I had with the minister at the time. Uh, they were quite interested in doing it as a regional project. We're far less interested in doing it as a one-off with a with a one or two municipalities. That helps. Thank you, Worship. So, so further to that, and I appreciate that context. So, further to that, I guess I would uh, put the motion forward for council to draft correspondence to. I, I probably screwed that up because we still have a motion live, uh, which is the motion to receive. Oh, so, why don't sorry, we? Your I was just going to take some questions out of that. But if we're interested in having a motion arising, we can talk to other things as part of that. So why don't we do that? I'm happy to call the question on the on the motion to receive the correspondence, and then we can come back to motion arising. So I'll, all those in favor of receipt, any opposed, none opposed, back to you, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I would put, thank you for that. I would put forward a motion to uh, write a letter issue correspondence uh, to the Township of Esquimalt indicating our ongoing support for a regional trial on speed limit uh, basically to their to their point about uh, lowering speed limit trials uh, and just yeah, indicating our on ongoing support for that initiative as they And your worship, sorry, staff had uh, somewhat prepared something like this, and it's it's a little bit uh, different than what Councillor Appleton had put forward, and we can certainly adapt that uh, based on his motion that's been made. Uh, I just got this up to start the the process, so we can work on it from here. For in his language, if that's what council's desire is, for sure. Yes, thank you, worship. I guess, I guess the key point would be here. Um, in addition to being kept informed, I guess the key point is indicating our support uh, for uh, the province entertaining a regional trial on lowering speed limits. if they're listening and can't see it for some reason, I'm just going to read it aloud, that the Council authorized correspondence to the Township of Esquimalt indicating that Oak Bay would support the province entertaining a regional trial on lowering default speed limits in the region. No words about the actual letter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we've moved it. Do you want to motivate? I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Right. 
All those in favor? Oh, no, Councillor Smart. My apologies. Um, just have a question since I don't have as much background on, on uh, this coming up previously before. So would it would it only um, likely to be to proceed proceed if if the, either the province tells the whole CRD to do it or if everybody agrees to do it? I'm just I'm I'm not clear on how um, procedurally this would would play out. Sure. So uh, again, a little background uh, on this one. The um, the province controls under the Motor Vehicle Act sets the default speed limit. So uh, for various roads, but roads without a centre line are defaulted to 50 kilometres an hour in the province. And so the ask has been, can we change the default speed limit to 40 or 30? Um, and the province, as I said, indicated that 40 would be seen as reasonable by them in the past and, and would be interested in entertaining a, a pilot, but I can't put words in there what they would, what they would approve now. Um, that's really the, the extent of their authority. We control the speed of our streets, so we could, as a region, decide that we were going to change things, but it wouldn't be enforceable by police unless the street is signed. So one of the problems we have is that to put up you know, 30 or 40 kilometer an hour signs on every single block of every single street in the community becomes prohibitively expensive um, to, to allow the police to enforce it. So the, the rationale here is if we can get a pilot project so the whole region is default, then we don't. We only have to sign the streets that are uh, that we want to have different than that. It could be a little slower, a little faster, depending on the piece. Go ahead, Councillor. It just wasn't clear to me in this particular letter that that's what Esquimalt was requesting, that it would be region-wide. Um, uh, my interpretation of the letter was that it um, was that province would give them the power to do it in their municipality. And so I just um, wanted to be clear on, I guess, what we were, if, if depending on how this plays out, I guess I do want to have our motion obviously include the fact that we would be kept in the loop and that even if it wasn't region wide, that we would still be interested in participating. So I was just trying to understand my interpretation of this letter and, and this motion not having the past history. Okay. Um, well, there you go. I don't know uh, where else. I, I, I think we're certainly in the wording of the, of the letter, we can ask them to keep us informed on the, on the piece going forward. I appreciate they're, they're sort of asking for their own right to do it. My, my, my read of this is that, because as they note, the province has indicated they would, they would support trials, but the, the feedback in the past has been regional in nature. Yeah, if they could get this, then obviously it would allow us to do it individually as well. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Just, just after moving the motion, just further to Councillor Smart's point, that the, the, the I, and I recall the same discussions about the issue being that there was, there seemed to be some engagement on the subject of doing the default speed limit adjustment, but the, the fact that it did not seem to, or at least I won't speak for the province, but it, it seemed to not be a, uh, well coordinated regionally or as or completely universal regionally about how they would come at it uh, seemed to essentially throw an obstacle into things and essentially call to stop on the whole process so I guess the intention of saying regional is to respond to I guess what the response of the province was was that if it wasn't regional then it essentially wasn't moving forward so with the eye of trying to make some motion on this and to try to get it entertained by the province um, underlining the interest in working regionally to come up with a consistent approach that the province could get behind to move things forward. I, I have no sense of whether or not that, that would make it more palatable to them at this juncture, but it's worth asking, I suppose. I think it, an easy thing to do, we don't have to have it as part of the motion, is we can always CC the province again on this and, and to the same place that they sent a note, just so they're clear on the fact that we would be interested and, and so forth, so that would be great. I don't think there's any changes required in the motion at this point. I think it's clear enough. All right, so with that, uh, any other discussion? I don't see any. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed. Thank you. Anything else on that matter? All right, and then moving on to item. Second. Moved and seconded for receipt. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? Go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. Um, yeah, I know, noticed that in the letter they do ask if um, we could support up to uh, uh, for up to five hundred dollars for the cost of services and becoming a partner or host for the AVICC, and, and I, I would like to suggest that we would look at that and and, and support that for five hundred dollars. We could probably take that out of our grants in lieu if we chose to this year, and then do something 
if they're looking at doing this every two years, look at something more um, specific in our budget every two years. But um, I think it's for $500, it's well worth us being a, a supporter of this uh, for all the good that ABICC brings to our community. So just for the record, I checked with staff on this, if we could just approve $500 for this in the meeting and we're welcome to do so. It is actually a 2024 um, budget item, so we'd approve it here, but it would go into the, into the financial plan in 2024. So I'll just make a motion to approve um, $500, go to the City of Victoria in support of the cost of, for services and becoming a partner host for the Association of Vancouver Island and Coastal Communities AGM and Conference in 2024. Second. And seconded. I'm not going to put that up on the screen. We're just going to take the motion as it's there. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Smart. Um, the letter also addresses coming up with topics for tourism workshops, and I don't know if we would want to include it also in the same motion or, in, or not, but I did have an idea to put forward that maybe we might want to have a um, cool kit workshop and, and share the success of, of that in the... Uh, forward as possibly an additional um, contribution. Thank you, Councillor Smart. I will deal with this motion arising first, and then we can get to that. I'm not, yes, let me, uh, gives me time to think about how to phrase and, and work that into this piece as well. Um, so the motion is for the $500 at this point. Any other discussion on the $500? All right, I, I, just for the record, uh, this is a normal ask. They've asked us every time, and we've always given it. And when we hosted the ABICC in Oak Bay, we went and asked everybody for money to support us, and they all gave it as well. So it's a, it's pretty common for the regional areas to, to give chip in a little bit, just if anybody's curious. Uh, all right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Can I just go go on with what um, with what Councillor Smart was talking about about the yes. cool kit? Because um, I, I I had an idea as well, which was to do a tour of Uplands Park. Because I thought since it's a gem of our region, <laughs> that um, that could be something like that. So perhaps what we might want to do is, um, you know, sit back and have a discussion around some other ideas of, of what we might want to put forward. So cool kit would be a great one, I think. I think Uplands Park tour would be a wonderful one. We could get the Friends of Uplands Park to be involved in that. Um, uh, I think we could come up with a few really good ideas for showcasing Oak Bay. Yeah, I, when when the, when you raised it, I was thinking, how does this, we don't typically haven't had motions directing kind of you know ideas to ABIC. It's ultimately yes, with ABICC to do it, and they're often tours of things unrelated to the municipality. We just they're just kind of in the region. So I'm not, I'm trying to think of how, if we want a motion here or if we want. I'm just, uh, I may just turn to step up. Well, people have their hands up with ideas. So we'll go ahead, Councillor Green and then Councillor Appleton. Yeah, I was just thinking that maybe submissions for ideas might be a better way to go, just so that we're not locked in. Um, and I was also thinking an Arts Alive tour that you could combine with a tour of Uplands Park as well. We have some lovely public art. And um, yeah, so I, I, I think it's a great idea to, to put forward ideas. Th so thank you, Councillor Smart. I'm going to ask Councillor Appleton and then come back to you. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I guess, I guess I would just put forward to say that in the potentially we could action it by in the response to the City of Victoria indicating our support with the monetary contribution that we also indicate our interest in hosting sessions in the district and request that when the conference planning committee stands up to to design those sessions, which ostensibly they're not doing quite yet, but when they organize to put the conference together that they reach out to the district uh, because we will have ideas. Essentially ask, how would we submit such ideas? Essentially, sure. yes, indicate our interest and indicate that we would like them to reach out to us when they design their program. Okay, so the motion right now is to approve $500 and I don't know if we need a motion to ask the question of how we submit. We'll just leave that one. I think we can do that. Is that Councillor yeah. Braithwaite? I think uh, having sat on the ABICC board, um, I think that what will happen is in, in, exactly as, as Councillor Appleton has stated that there will be an organizing committee and they at that time um, once once we start receiving information from ABICC um, about um, about dates etc then they will um, ask if there's any interest in, in people putting um, ideas forward and I think at that time we could do that so Councillor Green just as a thought so that it's not too burdensome for staff we may have to have a little subcommittee ourselves if we decide to do some of these things to help sort of to, you know, execute the plan. So just a thought. Thank you. Councillor Smart. 
Yeah, it, just because they have specifically asked in this letter um, to submit ideas, I understand maybe not submitting the ideas at this point, but it would be great if we could include in, in the response um, with the monetary funds that we are interested, just so we don't lose out on the opportunity. Yes, so where I'm looking at this right now, just so I can give clear direction to staff on this one, the motion is to approve the $500. I'm going to just make a request, maybe just we can, I'll, I'll proofread it before it goes out, but the letter back to them, like, letting them know that we are funding, also includes a very specific ask to say, yes, we are interested in providing some, uh, some ideas around uh, some of the tours, et cetera, and please let, can you please let us know how we would go about submitting those, where we would submit them, and they would give us, they can, then they are on the hook for letting us know the details. So that's my expectation. I think that's pretty clear to staff at this point. So good? All right. Thanks, Councillor Smart. That's right. The so motion on the floor right now is to approve the money, and I did not. We're, we're having a conversation within the context of that piece. I think that's right. I have not called the question yet on the motion to approve the money, I don't think. No. It's getting late. It's okay. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? Anything else arising from that? Not seeing any, so I'll move on to, uh, we're going to, uh, oh, can I get a mover of adjournment, please? Moved and seconded. Oh, Councillor Green, you wanted to. I, before I call the question on adjournment, absolutely. Go so ahead. that will be a line item from now on in our budget starting in 2024? No. No, it's a uh, so it's just for the one year in 2024. Oh, so I see. So I just I think Councillor Bra uh, Braithwaite's point was, you know, given that Victoria is now going to be hosting it every other year, that okay. we might just want to in our financial plan include the five hundred dollars sure. every other okay. year in our financial plan. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, motion to adjourn is on the floor. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bull.